So here's our scenario, okay? At Brio, we have this client, a new client, and they're pretty much a homogenous Windows environment. And let's say it's a healthcare facility which commonly uses Windows, okay? It's very common for hospitals and medical centers to, to use Windows. So that's, that's our client, and they're using Windows uh, workstations, let's say they're using Windows 10, and they're using Windows servers, okay? So that's our scenario. And so we need to make sure that we have some trusted situations for them on their machines because when a system is booting up, an attacker can actually insert themselves into the process and they can break into the system. And if they, they can force a system to reboot using scripts, they can leverage WMI, they can force reboots of servers and workstations. So we wanna make sure we have bootloader protections. And if they can get physical access, they could force that workstation or server to boot off different media and boot a different operating system. So we wanna have some mechanisms in place to create this trusted environment, okay? So take a look at this diagram here. We can see kind of the traditional boot process. And what we're using, by the way, is UEFI. UEFI is newer. It replaces the traditional BIOS. It's backward compatible. But in most situations, this is a UEFI proce process, not a uh, traditional BIOS process. So in this diagram, we have firmware verifications. We have firmware boot components, and they're gonna verify that all the UEFI executables are trusted, okay? That the OD loader is also trusted, okay? That's what we're gonna do with this particular environment. In step two, which we see right here, it involves this process, boot manager, win load, Windows kernel startup, and additional OS init files or init processes here. In this, the Windows boot components are gonna verify that these elements are digitally signed, okay? If there's any non-signed or non-trusted components, then we're not gonna go through the boot up process. We will not get to the Windows logon screen. And then hopefully we have some remediation processes in place where we can send these components and get them digitally signed, very important. So in step three, this is where we have our boot critical driver installation. And so we also wanna make sure these are digitally signed and trusted. And so these will be evaluated as part of the secure boot verification process during the, from the win load to the Windows kernel startup. Uh, we also have an early launch anti-malware driver with this trusted boot process. So with these three main components in place, uh, we can protect those machines of our clients, those workstations and those servers. Now we have some other <clears throat> features that we can use that are part of this architecture. And one of those, I'll just put ML here, is measured launch. Measured launch. Basically part of uh, Intel's TXT or trusted uh, execution environment, okay? So I don't, I don't know why it's not TET, but it's trusted execution, X for execution, environment or technology, so TXT. So this is gonna define platform level improvements uh, to offer building blocks for developing trusted platforms. Uh, it'll measure the controlling software. It'll also foil attempts by malicious users who can insert themselves into this process or by introducing software processors to change the controlling environment uh, and bypass set boundaries. There's also, what's part of this is SMX. SMX is basically the safer mode extension. And these are the extensions that actually launch the measured launch, the ML, and protect it from potential corruption. Okay, so we have bootloader protections, we have Intel's measured launch. We also have what's called IMA, which is Integrity Measurement Architecture. And so this is gonna work similar to mandatory access control architecture uh, that you may have maybe familiar with, some of the uh, architectures like Bella Padula and Biba, those types of mechanisms. It works like a Mac, uh, for example, in an LSM module for something like, let's say, S, uh, SE Linux be a, be a, the best solution I can think of to compare it to. So IMA is gonna, it's gonna collect, it's gonna do several things, okay? It's basically it's gonna collect and measure information about the process. It's gonna store information about your uh, architecture processes, okay? It's gonna make sure that any TPM information is gonna be stored uh, on an ongoing basis. It will do attestation 
Okay, so it's going to attest to the fact that the TPM is signed and that the process is working according to plan. Okay, uh, it also allows remote validation of systems as well. We can also do appraising, appraisal with the IMA, okay, uh, enforcing local validation and measuring against a baseline, okay. And then finally, obviously, uh, it protects, okay. IMA is going to protect uh, file security, uh, any extensions, the attributes of extensions that are part of the TPM process, protecting it from attack. So the three main components are the uh, bootloader protections that we talked about here. We have measured launch, which is basically TXT from IBM made possible by SMX. And then finally, the third component, IMA, integrity measurement architecture.